I thank you very much for, sir, for the extremely ordered lecture on chaos. And the session is now open for a few questions. Please be uh, very brief when you are asking so that we can take more number of questions. Uh, hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, so we do understand the idea of how we go to chaotic, chaotic systems. But do we have an understanding of how we go to orderedness from chaotic systems? <coughs> See, okay, let me come back over here so I can stand here. Um, the order that, uh, okay, what I've largely talked about is chaotic in time. All right? So we know that systems which are nonlinear will show a certain kind of, of unpredictability in time. The order that I'm talking about or metaphorically over here is of two kinds. One is that if you understand how something is going chaotic, that itself is a way of putting a certain order on it. But now that we know why the system is chaotic, people are able to make it more ordered. In particular, we may be interested in, uh, there are, uh, when you have a, a cardiac arrhythmia, that's a good example, because the heart is beating irregularly. You want it to beat regularly. You've heard of pacemakers? Right. You've seen pacemakers. What pacemakers do is basically to give the heart one solid shock, right? Defibrillators or what have you, boom, you go and hit it. But now I know chaos theory. So I know how to use chaos theory to make it ordered. Because I know why it went chaotic. All right. So today there are actually chaos theory based uh, devices that can control the heart and make it ordered as well. Okay. So the, the, uh, this is a very big area of chaos theory. It's called chaos control. And you can, you can actually do interventions. You know how to adjust it so that you can make it ordered. That's it. Yeah, yeah, you can ask. <laughs> Could I have that water, please? Somebody took away that water from me. <laughs> All I wanted was water. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Sorry. <laughs> I think we all enjoyed lecture very much and I could get this, uh, you know, chaotic theory, at least some concept in mind. Uh, particularly to see that, you know, 2 into, I mean, then 2 square, 2 cube and all that. And it leads to infinite, infinity. Yeah. And uh, so I find that everything can lead to that. Even if linear things are there, that will lead to, finally, to the infin infinity. Uh, can we this, I mean, uh, is there any attempt? for uh, this, uh, you know, for people, those who are working in this area, uh, to come out with some solution in the field of sociology, let's say, the people's behavior keep on changing, and that leads to chaos, chaotic situation many a times. Yeah. No, uh, well, look, one has to be a little careful. You know, we just use the word chaos in so many ways, you know, in a very precise way, I have been told, although I am not aware of uh, the precise application, uh, I know that there are chaos theory applications in psychology. I know that they are there in linguistics. Um, and I have been told that you know, people have attempted to use them in a variety of areas like sociology and uh, so on. Um, in psychology, for example, in perception, uh, there are ways, there are states of mind which, which you have to understand using chaos theory. Uh, I mean, what I've explained today is really the absolute beginning of it. Uh, there are, uh, you know, the, for example, when you look at optical illusions, you find your eyes seeing one illusion and then another, and you find your mind switching between the two of them. That kind of switching is chaotic. Our breathing patterns, our breathing patterns are chaotic. Uh, our heart is, is mostly regular. The brain, by and large, has to be chaotic. 
when it is not chaotic you are brain dead <laughs> you know so we are all carrying within us one thing which is very chaotic and one thing which is not i mean if so long as you are healthy kale <laughs> the brain is not quite connected with the heart because one is a muscle uh, rhythmicity and the other is an electrical uh, rhythmicity the heart beat and the breathing the you know the way in which uh, our nostrils there's sort of all sorts of interesting experiments that people do in particular the the rate at which we take in uh, air in through our nose uh, that has chaotic variations sir so we had uh, taking number of examples like pacemaker and uh, mri can be another example for the magnetic induction mm-hmm. imager is to see the uh, different kind of you know uh, magnetic images which call, conduct you know collected uh, to see th- what exactly is going on in the brain but uh, and it is just to measure to see is observe some chaos of a particular system mm-hmm. in the body but as far as the making of these instruments whether it is a mri machines or uh, pacemaker we should have uh, calculated the chaos in that machine itself which you know what kind of that tolerance uh, see typically required? most of the machine I mean, we don't want things to be completely chaotic right although sometimes we don't realize that uh, bridges you know you must have seen how you know when you have very long bridges uh, they are susceptible to very non linear effects and some famous bridges have broken because of that right uh, i mean i don't know whether it's popular to do ncc parades anymore but when you come to a bridge and you are marching in a battalion uh, you know you see that the bridge will move around that's because the you know the rhythmicity of your feet is setting up oscillations in the bridge and almost everyone you know you told break rank you just march in a a periodic fashion so that you don't excite the bridge you know these are all parts of nonlinearity and and study so most of the time when we make machines um we don't want chaos we want it to be nice and stable otherwise <laughs> more accidents even with this you have so many accidents you know you'll have much more than that yeah yes sir you can just shout uh, in my in my uh, computer project i had simulated the predator prey equations and uh, i got that strain uh, attractor and all that can you bring me close the mic uh, wow. i had got that uh, attractor and everything yeah uh, but uh, i mean uh, i could see that uh, the population uh, dips at a low and then somehow magically it goes up the prey population and similarly for the predator population uh, so i came i came to the conclusion that uh the it's a uh, chaos is a way of nature to uh, be to provide a robust system actually so a fallback mechanism uh, i mean so but so this seems a bit contradictory to uh, i mean you have on one side you have sensitive dependence on initial conditions on other side you have nature having this system for robustness so can you explain that okay Uh, so, you know this is the kind of question which is difficult to, let me try to explain what uh, what 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 he said uh, there's a very uh, sort of it's a common system